Honorable Prime Minister of the Federal Republic of Somalia, Madam Chair of the Committee of Ambassadors, Dean of the ACP Ambassadors, Excellencies, Representatives of Missions, Secretariat Staff, Distinguished Guests, Salam. The Committee of Ambassadors is honored to have with us this afternoon the Honorable Hassan Ali Kaire, Prime Minister of the Federal Republic of Somalia, a man of vision and action who has worked extensively in the field of humanitarian services. After successfully completing his studies at the University of Oslo in Norway and the Edinburgh School of Business in Scotland, Prime Minister Haire began his social work in 2002 as project coordinator at the Norwegian Refugee Council. He bref briefly left the NGO sector for a few years to pursue management of development projects. An accomplished entrepreneur, he returned to the NGO sector where he worked for nine years, moving up the ranks to eventually become regional director for the Horn of Africa. In this position, he demonstrated dynamic leadership and more specifically, that he was a man of vision and action. In fact, it was as the regional director for the Horn of Africa that Prime Minister risked his life during a mission in June 2002, when his caravan was targeted by armed men on the border between Somalia and Kenya. As a member of the large Somalian diaspora, Prime Minister Hassan Ali Kere helped to empower communities of Somali origin in many Western countries, especially Norway and the United Kingdom. In 2013, based on his success and experience, our distinguished guest joined the petroleum industry. He was appointed Executive Director for Africa at the British company Soma Oil and Gas, where he was tasked with revitalizing oil exploration efforts in Somalia. Noted for his professionalism and integrity, he was appointed Prime Minister of the Federal Republic of Somalia on 23rd February 2017. Our distinguished visitor and Prime Minister has continued to work tirelessly towards stability and reconciliation for all Somalis. By forming an open government inclusive of all the elements of the nation of Somalia, he has yet again illustrated his resolve to put the interests of the nation of Somalia first. Indeed, his intention and burning desire is to serve the interests of all the people of Somalia and in addition to serve those of his country's regional and international partners. Madam Chair, Excellencies, Distinguished Guests, allow me to close by expressing to the Honorable Ali Hassan Haire, Prime Minister of the Federal Republic of Somalia, my sincere wishes for success in his high-level mission to secure peace, prosperity, and lasting progress for the Somali nation, and to convey what a great pleasure it is for the ACB Secretariat, your family, our family and I, to receive so outstanding and accomplished a guest with us this afternoon. Thank you for your kind attention. Shukran. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Secretary General. It is my distinct pleasure to invite His Excellency Mr. Hassan Ali Kere, the Prime Minister of the Federal Republic of Somalia, to address the Committee of Ambassadors. Your Excellency, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair, Mr. Secretary General, Ambassadors, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. I want to start first by thanking you, uh, Madam Chair and Secretary General, for inviting me. And I, of course, do feel home. Uh, it, is, uh, it looks like home here, seeing the people I see. But I must admit that I would be really very glad 
to be welcomed by the chairperson here, but to be introduced by the Secretary General. So next time when I'm traveling, if I can ask you to come with me, that would be very good. <laughs> uh, briefly, when I listened to you, I actually felt that that was me you were talking about, but I don't think I'm that good. But uh, it, it is an honor and privilege to be here. Uh, and uh, as a founding member of the, this important institute organization, I am very proud to be able to join my brothers and sisters here and to be in a position to, to address you. And uh, although this was from 1975, uh, you still uh, continue to carry what uh, our previous leaders have uh, started to do for our future. And we still yearn to build that potentiality of our people and ingenuity. Now, as a proud member, of the organization, I represent a nation that you've heard about uh, over the past 30 years. But we're going to go back a little first and start from where we started. We're going to start from uh, the early 50s and 60s. Uh, Somalia, who then was the first African democrats, democratic nation, the, a lead nation within our continent, uh, found itself uh, at a later stage, uh, a nation that has seen a lot of problems, challenges, and trouble. And when you talk to people, they remember of Somalia of uh, terrorism, pirates, and humanitarian challenges, and famine. There was a Somalia that was the, the frontier of African democratic leadership, rule of law, and development supported a number of other African countries to seek their independence, some of them who might be here. But then that history seemed to be lost and forgotten for a while, but we are here to reclaim that history. We're here to restore that origin of our nation and heal the wounds of the past 30 years. Uh, I am very grateful for Madam Chair's introductory remark of our president, who has been elected a little over a year ago. That election is a new hope and a light uh, in our country and for the Somali people. So I'm going to tell you what we've been doing for the past year and a half or so, year and three months. And I will tell you a little bit of our expectations and how we, uh, those of us from the three different continents that this organization represent, how we should support one another and move our parts of the world forward. To rebuild our nation, uh, our government now uh, works on a three major pillars that we concentrate on. The first one, because we are fighting terrorism, we're trying to rebuild the security institutions of our country. But for us, we have a new def definition in terms of how to fight Shabab and terrorism. Fighting terrorism for us in, through military means will not solve the problems that we Somalis face. Simply because we're fighting an enemy from within. You're fighting people who are your cousins and brothers and sisters who live within you, within your village, who are not be able to be distinguished from the ordinary citizens who go to work in the morning and come home in the evening. That's why for us to fight terrorism means to provide good governance, to fight corruption, to promote a culture where a government can have legitimacy and trust from its people to ensure that there's an open and transparent allocation of resources, to have a justice model and system where people can feel comfortable, to make the government of Somalia be accountable to the people, a government that provides services to its people so that we seek legitimacy from our people 
are not from international outfits. Rebuilding our nation in terms of providing security for us means seeking acceptance from our people. Security, therefore, uh, for us means we start from scratch, build step by step, and that is what our president and the rest of the leadership of the country has been doing. And over a year now, a period of a year, we've made a significant strides and continue uh, to move that nation forward. We cannot rebuild our security institutions without mentioning our brothers and sisters of the, from the continent, the African Union, the AMISOM, whom some of them are here. Because of them and their services to our people and the sacrifices they made for the past 10 years, Somalia see now a future that hasn't been possible 10 years ago, or even seven or six years ago. They've paid the ultimate price. And we don't want their sacrifices to be in vain. That is why the President and I are committed to ensure that we restore the credibility and the dignity of the Somali people. <clears throat> so that people know Somalia, not what it is today, or what it has been over the past 30 years, but what it can be. To continue with that, we've been reforming the economy of the country because we've had a, a bad credit for more than 30 years. Zero access to the international financial institutions. No financial system that worked. But we had one thing that functioned in that country when, where nothing else to be found for 30, close to 30 years, when every institution of our country were destroyed in the early 90s. The productivity and the ingenuity of the Somali people never stopped because of the capacity of the Somali business community, both inside and outside the country. And they kept alive our nation. Because you have this business structure that is built on one thing. That was the reason why our government was destroyed. With our business community <coughs> has and had it for that 30 years, and that is trust among them. And that is the trust we are trying now to restore in our economy. Restore with international financial institutions. Our country has a debt of more than $5 billion that comes from the old regime, early 70s and 80s. And for a year or so now, we've satisfied every criteria that the international financial institutions with the specific focus of IMF and the World Bank has. And now there is a major potential for our nation to reach uh, pre areas clearance now in June or July uh, short period areas clearance with a long objective and focus on debt relief. Mm -hmm. Rebuilding our financial institutions, reforming our central bank, promoting our business community, creating jobs, and developing our nation so that we have an infrastructure that allows our other African brothers and sisters can come to our country and rebuild it together with us. We say this because we don't see us poor. We see us nation with a lot of potential. Longest cost in the continent. Potential in oil and gas, minerals, in fishing, agriculture, services and logistics, geographical location. You name it. A nation with a lot of potential that had had have had a problem. So the way we see and approach the world for us now is not to ask for handouts. We ask them who is willing to do business with us. And I understand that is the foundation under which you are guided as an organization. So we hope that in a in a 
very near future, there will be a lot of people from our neighbors and other countries uh, in our different continents that who will join and come and take part of our country's rebuilding efforts, but at the same time, take advantage of the potentiality of our nation because we see for us in the very near future the Somalia that will play a very strong role in the region and in the world. So to have that trust, we need to have policies that function. And there must be a strong cooperation with, between us, the federal government's leadership, and our member states. So that that structure of fair, open, and transparent allocations of resources are based on political structures that are built on the trust that I've talked about. So what our government is engaged in now is one, to redraft our constitution so that we have a constitution that is revised and caters for all the Somali people. Second, we engaged in adopting a new system of political power sharing, engaging in revenue sharing model with our federal member states, coming up with new electoral reform and electoral model for 2020 so that power is given back to the Somali people. Ordinary citizens should be what define our politics. Rule of law, civic rule, so that the 75% of our youthful population are the ones who will determine the future of our nation. And developing political parties that will take shape by the end of 2020. Within that, we've also started a new chapter of our history after 30 years of providing service to our people, building schools, roads, bridges, hospitals, so that the government is the best alternative for the Somali people. While we do all these things, we have one major challenge and others that we are confronting. And I'm saying one because that is the one I would want to leave with you so that you can support us with. And that challenge is very simple. In the eyes of the world, and many individuals see Somalia for what it has been. But we want all of you and the world to see Somalia for what it can be. That is the narrative we want you to help us champion, carry forward as we try to rebuild our nation. So is the case for you as you negotiate with the EU and others that you don't negotiate, you negotiate from a position of strength of partnership that is built on mutual trust, mutual interest, mutual responsibility. Built on what we can offer and what they can offer in return. Built on the, on the ingenuity of our people, the capacity and the resources of our people, the resources of our different nations, and the importance of our continents. For too long, there has been different set of rules that should no longer apply as you represent us. We respect everyone, but looking after the interest of our people, leaving future for our children that we are the ones who will shape the destiny and the future of our children should be what guides you all. And with that note, I thank you.